Hi, I'm Dr. Brock Schumann. I'm a biochemist working with zebrafish animal models of depression with the CanBind Integrated Discovery Program. So a remarkable feature of zebrafish embryos is their transparency, which allows us to see internal organs and physiological structures of living fish which would not be possible in an opaque animal. We make fluorescent markers that are indicative of disease states. For instance, our depression model zebrafish have brains that glow if treated with an effective antidepressant. Fish aren't great animals for approximating depression. They're simply not intelligent enough to truly experience such a complex psychiatric condition. So why would we use them at all? Well, they do have other properties that make them great for drug discovery. They lay a lot of eggs, which is a lot of material to work with, are a lot easier to genetically modify than mammals are, and they develop and hatch within two days, which is extremely rapid. At the Zebrafish Center of St. Michael's Hospital, directed by Xiaoyan Wen, we use zebrafish to study a large number of different diseases, including depression, to look for new drugs to treat them. Using a one-of-a-kind drug screening robot that distributes eggs into a 96-well plate, adds 96 different drugs, and then culminates by imaging all of them. And we look for differences in that fluorescence that are a hit that might be a new drug and are at least worth investigating further. So if fish aren't smart enough to experience depression, how can we use them to find new antidepressants? They can exhibit some depression-like hallmarks, such as being socially withdrawn, which we can quantify by tracking their movements. We achieved a depression-like state by forcing sexual abstinence in a tank where fish could see and smell potential mating partners on the other side of a barrier. Initially, they spend all their time trying to cross the barrier, but they eventually give up. This behavior can be rescued in the fish by treating them with antidepressants and unlike equivalent rodent models, the system works for both male and female animals, which is a huge advantage as women are more likely to experience depression than men. We looked at the biomarkers identified in depressed patients by the CanBind study and found many of them were altered similarly in the depressed-like fish, which means we can use them like molecular dipsticks that indicate depression level. And that's exactly how our screening fish work. We go from the patient's bedside back to the lab bench in order to discover new antidepressant medications for eventual patient use. In summary, we took the depression biomarkers discovered by CanBind in patients, we tested to see if they were elevated and depressed like fish, which they were, and then we genetically modified the fish to express a fluorescent protein in conjunction with them to discover new antidepressants. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, you can find more great videos about depression on the CanBind website at canbind.ca or the CanBind YouTube channel.